Hi, Megan. Um, so this is our community presentation uh, and for DMO on St. John's and their DMO. Um, yeah. So this is just a picture of St. John's at night from Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, the destination marketing organization uh, plays a key role in the city's long-term tourism development of the destination by having an effective travel and tourism strategy. Um, it tries to help sell the destination. So St. John's, St. John's DMO. Uh, so St. John doesn't. St. John's doesn't specifically have their own destination marketing organization because each city is too small to host their own. Um, so they don't even have like uh, their own like DFS or anything like that either. Uh, so what they've done is they've partnered with the province of Newfoundland and Labrador to advertise the city and province like on a global scale, scale and uh, domestic scale. Uh, the objectives of uh, tourism was to increase the non-resident visitation and expenditure. This will increase the tourism industry's annual contribution to the provincial economy, uh, increase adventure tourism markets in, to the province, and increase wildlife tourism markets into their province. I also forgot to mention that it increases eco-adventure tourism as well. I just didn't put that on the slide. Um, so for the target market, um, so St. John's is really targeting more non-residents um, tourism to the city. Uh, so they're marketing specifically in the mid-Atlantic region, uh, also the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S., the U.K., uh, and California. Activity-based markets such as uh, MNC, so marketing, sorry, um, meetings, conventions, and conferences. Uh, they're also uh, advertising out to that wildlife adventure tourism aspect of hunting and fishing, uh, so specifically for those markets. Um, they're also advertising it for hiking and outdoor adventure cruise markets. Uh, a lot of cruising is very important for St. John's, as well as the well watching and, uh, aspect of wildlife tourism. Uh, and then again, they also advertise up to the eco-adventure and wildlife tourism markets, um, because the Providence has all this natural beauty um, and their specific well watching season. Our repetition there. Um, so the marketing strategy is following uh, a growth segment approach. Uh, so as a province, they plan on increasing media relations, uh, and this will reinforce their brand image. Uh, their marketing strategies, they campaign with LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Flickr, um, they do have a visitor's guide, which is long. Uh, they have Canada 150 and social medias. So their campaign is uh, an experience uh, with nature right at your doorstep. Uh, and you have a video right here that will follow it. So this is a Rick Mercer report video.
this was just uh, like Saint that's just Saint John's is a uh, colorful advertising campaign. Uh, so you'll notice that it wasn't like a typical Rick Mercer report. It was more of a cameo that uh, he's done. And there's also other cameos uh, just such as uh, Chef Jeremy Charles and singer Amelia Curran. Uh, and then they had a gentleman at the end of the video as well. So this is also part of the advertising campaign. Uh, I remember in class you mentioned that uh, our wills are bigger than yours. I couldn't find that one for Newfoundland. Um, that was more towards St. John, uh, sorry, towards Nova Scotia. Uh, but this is one of them that I found um, for Newfoundland St. John's. It was like, you have an aquarium, um, take yourself there, uh, meaning come to Newfoundland and St. John's because the whales are way bigger and their aquarium is 7,000 pounds. Their staff structure for the tourism market is um, the tourism marketing division has 14 individuals that work within it. Um, the tourism product development, they have a team of six. Visitor services has three and operate eight visitor services information centers throughout the province and the research department has four team members within it that work to help research the province. So other partnerships that they have is the ACTP, or the PTCA in French. So that's the Atlantic Canada Tourism Partnership. It's compromised of nine Atlantic partnerships uh, throughout uh, province. Uh, so that's Atlantic Canada Opportunity Agency, uh, and then has four Atlantic Canada Tourism Industries. Uh, industry association, sorry, and then four provincial departments responsible for tourism. Um, they didn't specify what they actually were, uh, but those are the nine. They also have joint marketing with Destination Canada, so um, Canada helps to advertise the province of St. John's and Newfoundland, sorry, the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, they also have other industry partners. Uh, they've also launched a global advertising campaign in the UK, Germany, and France, uh, which was very similar to the video we just watched from. Rick Mercer, and they're also affiliated with the NLOA, which is the Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association for hunting and fishing. So basically, um, the Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters helps market for the wildlife tourism of um, fishing, like seasonal fishing and hunting uh, with St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Uh, they have private partners within their tourism partners. Uh, the City of Mount Pearl, Cruise, Cruise Association of Newfoundland, uh, the Hospitality Newfoundland, uh, Town of Conception Bay South, and the Town of Torbay is part, is some extra partners that they have to sell their destination. Um, so a quick description of the community. Uh, the population of St. John's itself is 100,645. Uh, there is a lot of community support, uh, and by that I mean St. John's wants to continue building community support um, because they want to start their own app uh, for St. John's known as MapGuide. Uh, so this will showcase the city's major attractions, uh, such as the iconic George Street, uh, a lot of local restaurants that are delicious, that kind of stuff. Uh, so they're focusing on developing adventure cruises as well, and on better the city's tourism infrastructure. Um, and then we get into the tourism infrastructure later on in, in the presentation as well. Um, I just want to point out that St. John's does have a really good um, community support in it because they understand that travel and tourism is a really big market for St. John's, as well as the province in general. So now we're going to work on this Plot for Newfoundland, well, St. John's Newfoundland. Some of the strengths is the natural environment, uh, intangible heritage in the city, so they've probably got like historic sites and everything. The iconic George Street, um, downtown and harbor are synonymous with St. John's, 
an experience with nature right at your doorstep, so you're probably you're able to go out your door and see the nature and stuff from your perspective, like the water and stuff. Their ability to host meetings, conferences, and conventions, and they host like several special events. Um, so this here is just a map of what St. John's looks like and what they would be adding to uh, their map guide. Um, and then again, it was for the rest of the project. Um, something as well, uh, the reason why St. John's is meetings, conventions, and conferences are so high on uh, like the type of strength is because that's really one of their main tourism draws aside from all of tourism. Uh, they're very strong in it and they advertise a lot for the community and destination can that comes in kind of like they hold a lot of those meetings and conventions with them. Uh, so weaknesses that they help have uh, is passage issues in terms of ground transportation. So cars, boats, buses, bikes, etc. Um, they have a lot of inbound tourism that's coming in, uh, but they don't have the infrastructure to support it. Uh, as well as not having enough infrastructure, they don't have the accommodation either. They have limited facilities for meetings, conferences, and conventions. Um, which is their best tourism sector and it's also growing. Uh, and their ever, global advertising is a little bit of work. They're only advertising to few locations and they're not making it, uh, they're not taking the opportunity to advertise for the rest of the world. Uh, their opportunity is to grow accommodations and the ground transportation, increasing visitor expenditure, continuously developing more consistent and high quality tourism products, um, the geo and culture tourism, emerging, emerging some of the markets from China, which will increase marketing opportunities, um, the cruise opportunities on the northern frontier, so a lot of cruises go through there, with whale watches, whale watching, fishing, like all the nature stuff. Uh, their threats, the main goal is to increase the non-resident tourism. So they want to bring more people in from other places to enjoy the nature, the beauty of St. John's. However, the statistics have dropped by 0.9% because it's all residents there, not people coming in. Um, so, for their airbound visitation, these are statistics from 2016 over 2015. Um, so, the spending from tourists um, that have come into the city uh, have increased by 493 million. Uh, that's supposed to say 2015, not 2014. Um, the non resident uh, automobile visitation has increased. The boarding cruises uh, by 5%. Boarding cruises has increased by 4.5%. The Marina Atlantic. Um, the business of uh, more cruises, more uh, wildlife um, tourism has increased by 4.9%, and the airport activity in St. John's has increased by 4.5%. However, in the, in the threats, um, the non resident tourism has dropped, but their spending has gone up. So, for our budget, for their budget, we have found. Um, this part, but there was another one. Um, there's salaries and stuff, and employee benefits. They have had, they use grants and subsidies to help, to help sell and to bring people in and to help build their destination. And they have revenue that from the province that they put into their tour, their tourism and marketing dollars. So their total tourism marketing was 14,375,000 for, which was an estimate for 2016 and 17, but it was revised to 14,500, 14, but they budgeted for 14,000, or 14,422,300. Uh, so in class, uh, we were told to revise the access to visas. I didn't find anything specific for St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. 
Uh, but I did find um, just a quick Google search for what uh, the uh, Canadian Immigration Center, I believe it was, um, is what they're trying to do. So they're trying to increase uh, access to visas to foreign markets, specifically the Chinese market, so that they can uh, have more workers coming to Canada, more students, and more tourism, uh, and an increase of tourism, sorry, uh, to Canada in general. These are the sources we use. Thanks for watching our presentation. Thank you, Megan. Okay, hit the red button.